In a world battling chronic inflammation, obesity, and sickness, we sat down with the author of The Deflamed Diet, Dr. David Seaman. This week on the Crack and Backs podcast, we dive into the unseed side of the food we eat. Since 1987, Dr. Seaman has been slaying the inflammation beast with diet's power culminating in a groundbreaking book that links nutrition, pain, and inflammation. Chronic pain, managed not just with pills but with your plate, a reality founded in hard research. Acclaimed by the American Chiropractic Association, his transformative work goes beyond academia, sparking a dietary rebellion against inflammation and pain. Ready for this wellness warrior's journey? Curious how your meals could be life-changing? Then strap in for a mind-blowing episode on diet, inflammation, and pain's crossroads. Stay tuned. Ready to change your life one bite at a time. David, welcome to the show. And uh, you look fantastic. And, you know, <laughs> thank you. Just don't I'm lean glad. forward, David. Don't yeah, lean don't lean forward. forward. <laughs> <laughs> Only forward is the league. That's true. Right. He's gonna he's gonna be all, all all straight. Hey, yo, I just want to kick this off and right off the bat, and we're gonna start taking some of the confusion out of supplements and supplements. As we all know, have been a billion have become a, like a billion dollar industry, and everywhere you turn, you see ads now. Mm-hmm. Take this and take that. And it seems like the supplement companies are almost trying to compete with the big pharma companies. Um, what are supp- why are supplements so important for people even to take? Because you hear both sides of the story. And uh, why can't we just get our nutrients from our foods? Yeah, I think for the most part, part we can in, in general. But things like, say, vitamin D, depending upon where you live, uh, if you're living up in the north, you just can't get outside. Because the only place we can get vitamin D from really is the sun shiitake mushrooms and uh uh caribou or 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 reindeer there may be one more and and then and then and then cold water fish yes like yeah 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 that's how the arctic circle natives got their vitamin d it was from the from the cold water fish the mushrooms and 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 uh eating uh rudolph and and and, and his family and friends yeah so <laughs> so well so, <laughs> that being said though but that being said um well, when you th- when you, when you think about it, when you th- actually think about how we sustain life, right? We for us to live, animal or plant must die. So, it, although we joke it, it is it is a weird domain to live in, right? For one animal to live, others either either eukaryote or I guess our plants, pro- whatever plant or animal has to go. So, um, I would say that there are certain key supplements that are good for us all to take. But then the 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 fear mongering, like before a YouTube channel uh, video plays, there's this young, really these young, really beautiful young men and women. They're you know they're 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 flexing their muscles, telling you how to get testosterone. And you don't do this, or which of these which of these foods is killing your testosterone? And they make it sound like flax seeds are going to just wipe out a male's testosterone, which is complete nonsense. And so, so they scare you and then they give you this list of this testosterone boosting supplement. And to me, that's where the nonsense is. Or like a, a guy like Joe Rogan, who likes to trash chiropractors, he'll have, he'll, he'll, he'll be selling his, his, his on it brain, whatever boosting thing, some nootropic. And when you look at the actual study, the improvement was like from like a 15% of the, the number went from 15 to 18 statistic. It was, it was irrelevant. I mean, it, it was meaningless, but they made it look like it was this great thing. So that's just the BS is everywhere when it comes to pushing supplements to, to, to evoke a cure when supplements should be viewed much more as what they actually are called to supplement the diet. Right? So, during the winter, it is wise for us to supplement our diet with vitamin C, zinc, and and, and vitamin D. And, and the reason is because winter months are shorter days, generally more stressful for people, particularly if they live up north. So less sunshine, colder weather, more stressors, more physiological stressors that evoke a chronic low-grade inflammatory state that pushes people more readily to experience cold and flu and flu symptoms. And then in that sense, it's good to, 
to boost with it for a while. So, you know, to be strategic with it as opposed to just, you know, is it good or bad? And, and I think that, that the average person should take magnesium and vitamin C and vitamin D all year round, just at varying doses. And the exactly how much, I have no idea. And nobody else does either. That's, see, see, that's the other thing. Like, exactly how much do I need? I have exactly no idea how much you exactly need. I don't think, I, <laughs> I don't think anybody really knows. <laughs> Which magnesium, Dave? Which well, magnesium are you suggesting? I think that we should get, uh, I'm, I'm more of you buy it from a company that you trust, magnesium guy. Like I think avoiding, say, magnesium oxide is a good idea just because it's more difficult, less absorption. But I would take magnesium oxide from a reputable manufacturer than magnesium malate from a non-reputable manufacturer. Because when you make pills, now this, this is the, the interesting thing, that, 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 that if anyone listening and if you guys ever have a chance to visit a manufacturing company, you really should. Because that's when you get to see who actually knows what they're doing or not doing. Like I have visited, I don't know, five or so manufacturers. And, you know, the difference in terms of quality control and testing to make sure that what's on the label will be in the pill is uh, it's it's quite stunning, actually, how, you know, literally people, some people are making stuff in their garage where others are making in drug labs. So that's the most important thing. That being said... Um, when it comes to magnesium, I mean, really anything other than citrate and oxides are fine. And the reason why for those is because magnesium tends to push one's bowels to get a little bit more loose, right? So ascorbates will do the same thing. Citrates do the same thing and oxides do the same thing. So therefore, I would just avoid those three when combining them with magnesium. That being said... Which Calcium citrate is a good combination because calcium tends to be binding to the bowels and citrate tends to be loosening. So calcium citrate is mm -hmm. a good, yeah, yeah. I mean, little things like that, that, you know, especially you're like, oh, that's so interesting, but that's like little, like, I mean, it's, it's, it's like little cute stuff, but it's nothing like earth shattering. Like, what do I take for this? Like I got an email yesterday from this poor, oh, these, I mean, I feel bad. I'm like, oh, this is no wonder why people are so easily propagandized. I mean, I get email from a chiropractor. No, but seriously, he's like, I'm on your diet. Is it okay? Is it safe to have popcorn? And I'm like, oh man, you actually, you want me, are, are you kidding me? You want enough little handful of popcorn is going to do you in or not? Come on. Is, is brown rice allowed on your diet? I'm like, um, I mean, really? A little cup of brown rice? That's your big concern? You know, 100 calories of brown rice? How do you come on? <laughs> <laughs> the average... <laughs> man, the, <laughs> the average person... Get this, fellas. This is crazy, man. The average person out there, they get like 60% of their calories from refined sugar, flour, and oils. It's like more than half their calories come from donuts. And this guy's like, can I have a cup of brown rice? Is that allowed on your diet? <laughs> oh my God, Dave. So, uh, Dave. so, so people just are such oh. pigeons. They're so easily like tricked. If you're freaked out about it, like a little bag of popcorn, right? I mean, right? You know, you know you're going to be buying some weird supplements from some from some slick salesperson, right? Yeah. So, so, so that's a really like kind of long-winded, humorous way, I guess we got there to say. I think we should stick with basic supplements, like again, magnesium, fish oil, vitamin D, things like ginger, turmeric chondroitin sulfate, uh, glucosamine, calcium stuff, basic things, enzymes, like for sports, proteolytic enzymes, post-injury. See, those basic things have always been around ever since I started Cairo school in 1982. And so they, it's like they're the mainstay. And now people are, 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 are wondering, which is better? Is, 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 which should I take, ubiquinol or ubiquinone? I mean, because like, ubiquinol is the new one. I'm like, well, 
before ubiquinol, there was ubiquinone. And ubiquinone had a good had a good reputation. It was ubiquinone that had all the successful CoQ10 outcomes. So here's the difference. One's more expensive than the other, and the ubiquinol gets a little bit better absorption, but I don't think there's that big of a deal. Because the biggest issue is what your are are the calories that we're eating. They're the that's the biggest issue. And then not taking enough. Dave. Yeah. Dave. What's magnesium three and eight? One of our guests in the pe- previously, and is that any has a merit to a daily regimen? I think the three, three and eight. I think the three. The, the, the three and eight part is the. Uh, is, I haven't looked into the chemistry a whole lot. The three and eight is like for relaxation. I think you know, you know that kind of deal. Yeah. Yeah, okay. and I don't know if it has if if if, if it has that big of a, an issue because before there was magnesium threonine, people were already taking magnesium lactate and magnesium citrate and malates for relaxation anyway. Uh, so the like that, like that powder that and people take at night before it's called like calm or something like that. Magnesium calm. Yes. Yeah. yeah. yeah magnesium yeah. has, has a very, very, on the top, I'm trying to figure out what the relaxation effect is now, but it has a calming effect on both nervous system and 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 and, and inflammation. Yeah. Dave, vitamin D is an interesting subject. It just you know, it's people that you know live in different climates and so on. That is, from what I understood, is it most of the receptor sites for vitamin D uh, are in the chest or the the back or something. But we're you know people even in in you know, like in South Florida that are outside don't still don't get enough unless they're, you know, fully exposed. Well, at least their shirts are off, you know? So is that, is that a, a reason why some people that don't get enough vitamin D, even though they're outside? I cannot say for the specific variability that one might have in terms of the, of the sun, like you can see actually blasting my head, uh, sun and yeah. then and, <laughs> sorry and then conversion into vitamin d i, I suspect there are uh, mutations that will make that that will lead to one producing less than others but but in general though the the lighter your skin the more readily you burn and the lighter your skin you typically mm-hmm. live in uh, further northern climates like you think the scots and the mm-hmm. irish right they're pale, pale, pale. Yeah. They get a little bit of sunshine, and then that's enough vitamin D for them. Mm-hmm. And then you go down further down towards the equator, and you get a beautiful black skin because you need more melanin, so you don't get skin cancer. And so, so they need lots more vit- more hours. When it comes to people mm-hmm. in Florida, where we are, shirt on, shirt off, that's just kind of a, var- a variable thing. But what I, I will say about vitamin D that's very interesting is that most people are afraid to take as much as they should because of the way the units are, are measured because they, they're done in, in international units. So I use, right. So if you tell someone to take 40,000, I use a vitamin D, they're like, Oh my God, 40,000, 40,000. I'm asking you, Oh, 40,000. Well, 40,000. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Right on. Oh man, oh, 40,000 I use, fellas, it's one milligram. 40,000 I use of vitamin D is one milligram of vitamin D, right? Uh, so, yeah, so now as now as vitamin D supplement goes, one milligram is a lot of vitamin yeah. D, right? But for perspective, 40,000 right. is one milligram. Yeah, I mean, so it's just not not that much. So I'm forgetting how much how much this they took a day, but for six months, study was done a pilot study on on people with vitiligo. Actually, speaking of vitiligo, uh, yeah, oh yeah, and uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, don't vitiligo. lean forward, Dave. Yeah, and, <laughs> and and psoriasis for six months they took I forget how much how much it was a day. It was some thirty thousand I use a day or more. It could, it could be even higher uh, per per day for six months. And then literally you had uh, repigmentation in the vitiligo people and massive, and the massive reduction. Yeah. Yeah. Repigmentation, the vitiligo people, wow. massive reduction. Wow. Yeah. 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 If, is there a way I can do a screen share on this, on this thing here? I'm trying to think if I can, 
any, anyway, though, I'll send you the uh, the article, and you know, and 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 you can see. I can actually get the because it is stunning, though. So so and so people tend not to take enough supplements when they do take them. And hmm. so, yeah, so so if you think of like say like say enzymes like bromelain trypsin, chymotrypsin for post injury, you know, you typically got to go several thousand milligrams per day. You know, per per day. I mean, in the, in the exact amount, I don't want to say just because. But it's more than what's on the label. I mean, I I polished off for me post injury where it says you know take however many a day and we'll, you know, it'll be a week. I'm done with them in three days. And the oh. and 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 the healing was much more dramatic than it would have been otherwise. So people mm-hmm. tend to take too little when it comes to to because they're like thinking it's drugs when they should be not thinking that they're drugs at all. So I really Very don't. Good. I really am curious about the vitiligo thing. So I'm actually going to, well, while you know you're, what, Dick, yeah. When you, you know what, if we, we, we can edit that in or, or oh, have good. it uh, as a link you oh, know, good. As okay. in post-production. Right, Terry, we'll, we'll get that. Yes, sir. Get that out. Cause I think that's super interesting. Really? Yes, cool. That's fantastic. Yeah. It's really cool. Dave, let me ask you about, yeah, it was, what is it? It was expensive. It was, it was 35,000 IUs per day, every day for, Six months. Yeah. No kidding. Yeah, and so and, and so people get what? so people get worried about like you know uh, the 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 range of vitamin D in the blood is like about 30, 30, 30, 30, 32 to a hundred nano nanograms per mL. And in this study where people started off, they started off at I mean they were like really low. I mean their their vitamin D was like as low as fifteen, eighteen. And they raised it up to as high as 170 for some people with no oh vitamin God. D side effects. And the vitamin D side effects that there were is always hypercalcemia. So 35,000 IUs yeah. per day. And you're talking like this guy's entire back was filled with, with psoriasis. And it was clean like a baby's bottom afterwards almost. Yeah. Stunning. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. No wow. kidding. Yeah. Really cool. All right. I got to use that at... I gotta, I gotta have that conversation with a couple of patients. That's pretty cool. Yes, Dave, let me ask you about <clears throat> when, you know, the diet in America. The, you know, it, if you're conscientious, super conscientious about food, I mean, you can get away with, you know, n- e- eating well. But when you, you know, if you're, if you have a, a gluten intolerance or sensitivity, maybe even celiac, you know, and then you go to another country. And you end up eating bread or pasta and you can get away with it. What, what, what is that? What, what, what goes on in American, uh, you know, in this country versus other countries for the, uh, for the listeners that. Well, that's a bit tough to... one though. For, like the gluten one's a little bit tough because, because we've only, we've only eaten the gluten wheat that we have eaten. Right. So I really don't know what it's like to eat non gluten wheat or way low gluten wheat, like historically, the wheat was. So I really, that's just not my bag. As awesome powers would state, that one's just not my bag, baby. I don't, (laughs) but that is true though. So, so, so for people who do, I mean, just practically speaking, the why I don't really understand, but practically speaking, if you want to have BLTs and you found a, a, you know, a non-gluten bread, well then have at it, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Now the one rap about like- that is your, your is your typical you know bakery in another country that you walk in and grab a loaf of bread that you wouldn't have typically done here in America. Is it because of processing? Is it you know? Is now it you're asking that same question better, again in a little bit of a different fashion. Then my answer is still going to be I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. Know. <laughs> Yeah. Try to check I'm trying to lead you down. Well, you know, we're back to that spot. I don't know. <laughs> I guess I, I guess I wasn't satisfied enough with that answer. So maybe, maybe, maybe. He does know. We'll kind of weasel in there and see if we can get. <laughs> I really, I don't oh know. Oh my god. I forget the, uh, uh, I, I think it was called like einhorn or einkorn. Or there was a there was a, a type of wheat that was naturally oh, yeah. low, low, low on the gluten scale. But I really don't know. You know, I really don't want to talk about, because I just, I, I just told you everything I know. That's it. 
<laughs> I think you know a lot more than that, but okay. okay. Uh, That's what I mean. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, so let me, let, let, let's go back to supplements, mm-hmm. you know, and, 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 you know, people's symptoms yet, you know, we know as doctors that are not the best way to find out, you know, what someone actually needs going to your regular medical doctor, what have you. Do you do any tests in particular to, to people to find out what they actually are deficient in, like lab test? Do you do any? No. Do you, would you recommend or do you suggest or based on just consultation and symptoms? Yeah, for the most part, fortunately, almost, you know, all of us, although we look a little different, right? We look different. Skin's color is a little different, different ethnicities. But for the most part, the biological human requires everything to be the same. I mean, we're all very, very, very consistent in terms of our needs. So the mm-hmm. primary issue that that clouds the, the picture is that it's always about like, what do we do to treat these things? Well, the reason why we have all these problems that want to be treated is because over 75% of the adult population in America is either overweight or obese. And so once we pack on the extra calories, the extra calories is associated with the fat mass that we increase, like the, the, the increasing fat mass. At, at, at some point, you go from being normal weight, anti-inflammatory, overweight, anti-inflammatory, and then overweight, pro-inflammatory. There's this time period that occurs as we put on extra fat mass, it takes time for our body to basically, this, this accumulated fat, as it keeps accumulating, what happens is the fat cells, they become squished a little bit. They go through hypoxia. And now your fat cells actually go through a rotting process. Literally, as opposed to going through normal apoptosis, they go through necrosis. They literally rot. And so, yeah. And so what happens is you got these so a fat, so imagine the, my, a, around my finger in the middle where you see my wrinkled forehead, that would be the fat cell. And around the fat cell on my, imagine, imagine on, on, on my thumb on my finger, the border of the cell, the outside are macrophages lining up to gobble up the dead fat cell. It goes through a necrotic process. It goes through literally like a necrosis degradation process that you can't take anything for that. You cannot take supplements for, for necrotic rotting bodies. So people, once they cross a certain weight threshold, they become necrotic and hyperglycemic. Nothing can be taken for these people when they're necrotic and hyperglycemic. Yeah. See, that's why supplements don't work and why drugs don't work because you got this like wave of flame. You can never outrun the inflammatory wave when it's created by a necrotic state due to obesity and hyperglycemia. So that's why that should be the most important thing, not worrying about supplements. Yeah, yeah. So so the key should be, like the email I got yesterday, I, my, my husband wants to know if he can take me, you know, if he can have brown rice. Of course you can have brown rice. You, you can have a donut a day if you want. I mean, it doesn't make any difference. You could literally go from being... 350, six feet, and then and then in six months be 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 180 and have a donut every day. So it's not the donut that's the problem. It's all the it's all the extra calories in addition to that donut. Not these. I, mean, I think we should not have a donut every day, right? But um, we can, <laughs> right? We can. The problem is if you if if you go to a rest, and this is real. I think this would be really helpful for most people. Go to when you're at a restaurant the next. I mean, look at it. Look at your meal choice. Whatever it is, it's like fifteen hundred calories, and it's not. It's not enormous. It's like a plate. Americans eat calories at at an excess that is stunning. Stunning the overconsumption of the calories. That is the enemy. Not yeah. how much vitamin D is safe. <laughs> oh man now the question really would be how many donuts are safe maybe one a day as long as you're good the rest of the day <laughs> oh, man. I, I, I especially like the way you put a voice to an email right I just, Wait, yeah I, I, lo- <laughs> <laughs> I got that from bill burr you know i i want <laughs> <laughs> what do you think 
we should do. <laughs> you know, the whole time I'm going, who is that voice? And now I realize it is Bill Burr. Yeah. <laughs> You look a little bit like oh. Seinfeld, but I'm feeling a little bit of Bill Burr there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what really makes me mad is um, that's not how I sound, and I know I, you know, by me sending you that email, I think. Oh, well, give me another example. Hey, on, on that, yeah. yeah. All right. Right now, everybody is. Before you give me that example, everybody's. Uh, so many Americans right now are inflamed, right? And they and they have chronic inflammation. So if supplements or drugs can't help, what's, what is your first attack is just reevaluate your diet. But um, So that's for chronic inflammation. But for the acute inflammation, you got somebody who has a flare-up of gout or a flare-up of something really inflamed. What is a way to get them out of it? Well, so, so across the board, calorie restriction – is the key, whether it's acute or chronic inflammation that you want to get at. Because the second that you create a hypercaloric state, you have to force the body to go into work mode to store all that extra work, right? Plus, when you have that, that already hyperglycemic state, now you add more glycemia, and then you have this protracted period of inflammation after eating. So you want to immediately get to caloric restriction and restrict it with calories that do not spike glucose because almost everybody's glucose once they hit a certain threshold of, of obesity uh they're going to be hyperglycemic even if it's just 100 i mean 100 is when you sorry uh, no fasting uh, well you, no, I have, you suggesting like you a 12 hour fast absolutely oh, well whatever you can do to do the i mean i think that we should do time restricted feeding Right. So, so finish your last meal or food six or eight o'clock at night, and then don't eat again until, you know, 16 hours later. It's a very, very smart move. Very, very smart. Um, so, so that's, that, that narrows the window. It reduces the time you can, you can, you can shove, sh shove food in your face. I watched this, uh, you really, we, we really should, there, there's a hilarious Netflix, uh, series called, it's called the good place hilarious ted danson plays the head demon pretending to be a good guy in the good place and they end up finding out that they're in the bad place and and the way the bad place demons refer to humans is like they're just like they're mobile turd factories <laughs> they're just walking turd machines I mean, and if you think about it i mean if you think of it <laughs> <it's> <laughs> turd. turd if you think about it right we really are walking turd machines. <laughs> it's pretty. <laughs> I mean, the, and, and these walking turd machines, they take their turd machines so seriously, you know? I mean, oh, they're just, they just glorify their turd machines constantly. So we should, <laughs> what we should do is treat our walking turd machines properly, right? Because when they become hypercaloric and obese, they become ornery, they, they disease ridden, it becomes a nightmare for everybody, right? So calories really are the key. And wow. yeah, so it doesn't mean never a French fry again, or never a potato, it means not bags and bags and bags of them. So here's, here's what I would say. So the three of us, are probably way pretty close to what we weighed when we were seniors in college. Would that be a fair, a fair statement? Pretty close. Yeah. Yeah. Terry, how about you? Pretty close. Yeah. Yeah, me too. I weigh like, I'm like yeah. 170. That's what I weigh when I was graduating college. So, so I'm 63 this summer and I'm, and, and I was 22. So that's 40 years ago. I weighed the same. So everybody should. So, so even though like my hair is no longer has any game, I mean, look at this, this is horrible. But uh, I still, I st <laughs> I still have a sort of the general appearance, even though like on camera, you know, it looks weird, and you know, we look weird on camera. But you know, I still see, I I still recognize Spencer as Spencer when I met you, I don't know, 20, 30 years ago, because you haven't gained any more weight, so you're just an older version of yourself, right? But when people start to gain weight and they gain 50, 60, 80 pounds, they now look like unrecognizable older versions of themselves right and so and so 
mass, it's not just the fat gain that, that makes us look different. We actually get metabolic changes such that hyperglycemia and obesity, it is the perfect chemistry for preventing proper joint repair mechanisms and tendon repair. <laughs> yeah. Fat cells that accumulate in the fat pad, in the fat pads around joints, when they become obese and necrotic, they participate to the degeneration of the joint that they are living and operating in. That's how important calories are. I mean, there's nothing more important than calories. And see, that being said, then, then to me, it's like now you fortify this beautiful, properly calorie balanced diet with as much vegetation as possible, because that's really vegetation is just so nutrient dense and takes up space volume wise. And then add magnesium, fish oil, vitamin D, CoQ10, glucosamine chondroitin, collagen. You add those things to support this stuff. Then magical things literally can happen for a lot of people. Yeah. 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 Oh, man, is that great. I love listening to you, Dave. <clears throat> it's just so now, simple. It's, it's just so easy to do it that way, you know? Yeah. Now, my... Okay, so I'm going to shift a moment into immunity, immune system, and this whole talk about post-COVID stuff. Yeah, yeah. And I'm sure you have an opinion, and you can just unleash whatever you want to say about it. But, you know, these viruses, these viruses really affected people and left them with many symptoms. You know, one of them, brain fog, you know, joint pain, so on. Um, any protocols you suggest for people dealing with these issues? What's really interesting is and I didn't really think about this because ev because every year prior to COVID, you know, you would drive around the corner wherever your Walmart was or Walgreens, it would say free flu shots, you know, and and then you just knew it was flu season, right? But um, yeah. like like and and that was the only thing I ever really even thought about in terms of how the human body deals with a a viral infection. And then when COVID hit, and I started looking at it, I'm like wow, it turns out. That exactly what I just told you about obesity is exactly what applies to COVID, except for outliers, because there's always going to be outliers, right? Like, like they're like but the, the the people. Now the problem with the whole COVID thing is it became politically polarized, right? So now people are are dug in and they're never going to you know undig. I mean, and the problem is because some people actually dug in where it actually in in their brains they could justify six feet apart waiting to get onto the airplane and then shoulder to shoulder on the airplane. There is no, there, there is no, <laughs> you have to be propagandized to believe that that is actually legitimate, <laughs> but they're dug in, man, they're dug in. So, so when, when the whole COVID thing hit and it was, it was probably, it was March when it became official that it was a problem. And then it was March when, uh, I forget what newspaper outlet it was. It said that people who are obese and have heart disease and diabetes, they're much more likely. So I heard that. I'm like, what? So I, I hopped into the, the lit and I found tons and tons of papers that have demonstrated that. And there's one paper that was published in April. It was right at the very beginning of it because they just kind of got their act together and wrote, wrote this paper real fast. Uh, that, 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 that scientists have been aware and have known. It's been the literature since 1918 uh, when the Spanish flu, even though it didn't come from Spain, but people who were obese or, star or malnourished and starving were much more likely to die. Now, now no one is malnourished and skinny, except for maybe you know, druggies and alcoholics, you know, you know, really the destitute people there. But otherwise, you know, we don't have the problem of, of malnourished and skinny and starving. Everyone's enormously fat. So for over, for over 100 years now, it's been known that if you're obese, you're much more likely to die from, from, from Spanish flu, any flu, common cold, all, all the stuff. They look at it again, they, like when, you know, when the big, uh, back in the 19, late 50s, early 60s, late 60s, they kind of a bunch of more virulent flu strains allegedly blew through. And once again, same thing, obesity, hyperglycemia. Same thing for H1N1, obesity, hyperglycemia. So then how come every single, and so then, you turn on the news and who do you see? De Blasio. Here, French fries and Shake Shack. Go get your extra shake if you get the jab. 
I mean, out in California, they're going to give you a joint, a jab, and a shake. I mean, it's just like a party out there. <laughs> what is that about? Did you know that? A friend? <laughs> well, they, they also gave you, what was it, the uh, donut? You know, you get yeah. a, uh, 12, a 12 pack of donuts if you show us your vaccine yeah. card. <laughs> it's unbelievable. <laughs> it's absolutely insane. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's so, so, so when it comes to, to immune health, so this is the stunning thing because hyperglycemia, so, 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 so people uh, 60 years and older, uh, 40% or more are metabolic syndrome individuals. That means that their blood glucose is always above 100. Below 125, that's kind of, that's the cutoff for diabetes. So, so when you're hyperglycemic, hyperglycemia creates a scenario that reduces the ability of, of macrophages and neutrophils to do their phagocytic activity. So if you're hyperglycemic, it's more difficult to clear viral and bacterial infections, okay? So 40% of people our age <laughs> are at a reduced risk of clearing. So then when you're obese, so the obese fat mass, like so, so if it would just be like uh, you have five fat cells, when you become obese, you don't get 50 fat cells. Those fat cells just get bigger. They fill up. And remember, I talked about the, you know, the, the immune cells, that circle, that's called a crown formation, a crown-like formation around the fat cell. Well, it's not just macrophages that go rushing in. You, you go from this unbelievably anti-inflammatory. So sports people, because it's sports, us, you guys, right? So I surf and play golf. So sports, I bicycled from New Jersey to Florida. So sports, there you go. Um, yeah, so, so lean, lean fat cells. Lean fat cells release a substance called adiponectin. Adiponectin travels from fat mass around the body in blood, and it stimulates mitochondrial biogenesis and skeletal muscle. The primary modulator of, 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 of human muscle mass, independent of exercise, is healthy lean fat cells. Adiponectin create drives mitochondrial biogenesis and insulin sensitivity in skeletal muscle. Unbelievable. Lean fat cells have a, have a, the adipose tissue mass consists of fat cells and immune cells. I, didn't, I had no idea about the immune cell thing until maybe 15 year, years ago. Yeah. And so when you're lean, lean fat cells, and then you have anti-inflammatory immune cells, as the fat mass increases, the amount of healthy immune cells, anti-inflammatory drop off and the pro-inflammatories increase such that once you hit a certain threshold of obese pro-inflammatory status, if it's there long enough, you end up with an infiltration of, of, of cytotoxic T cells and natural killer cells. Those are the two cells that come about whenever there's a viral infection. So obese people, once they cross a certain threshold of of, of, of severity, they live in a constant state of low-grade viral infection body chemistry. And I know, and because of the hyperglycemia, they can't clear it. And because of the obesity body chemistry, they produce less type one interferon, which is how infected cells report to the immune system that they're infected and can be taken out. And that is why obese people stay infected easily twice as long, typically, as lean people. They expel more viruses. They actually are the body factories. Not only are obese people, uh, like all of us, walking turd machines, they are actually now the primary producers, seriously, the primary producers of viral mutations. Yeah, the obese body mass produce. Yeah, I know. It's just unbelievable. It's unbelievable. So again, we're back to the exact same thing. You gotta shed, you gotta drop the calories and you gotta do the exact same things, vitamin D, vitamin C, the exact same things I said before for general health is for immune health. Cause it doesn't change anything. Yeah, yeah. So, That's the so nice I part a nice question. Yeah, please. I got a question. You got, yeah. a, you got an athlete that is actually in really good shape and let's, let's take uh, Spencer sport football, good, you know, good sport and you're feeling really good. But he got a viral infection, call it COVID, call it a cold, call it flu, whatever. 
And now his taste buds are a little off. His stomach is, and he's always got this stomach, some stomach issues. And now he's having a hard time. Uh, he food doesn't taste good. And he doesn't want to eat it, and and it just causes problems. So he goes to these doctors. They want to do stool samples. He goes to some naturopaths. They want to do microbiome studies. So what are some things does this this kid has to do to get the or these athletes have to do to kind of get their system back in back in neutral again? Well, it's really hard to say, right? Because it's such a weird outlier scenario that we're stuck in. So I think that the, the and I, you know, I, I never, I, I really avoid using, you know, simple words that you can use in a health food store, you know, like say reboot, you know, we want, you want to reboot your system, right? Um, but yes. yeah, yeah, huh. but, yeah. I think that probably doing a five day water fast would probably be a good idea. Mm. And the reason why now, now, and now, you know, you, I learned about Prolon from, uh, from Len Fay a couple of years ago. And I think if you, if you don't want to do a five day water fast, then just do the five day Prolon thing, which mimics a five day water fast. And and the reason is because what that does is it's, is it, is it causes your, you go through this autophagy process where you basically catabolize old senescent cells and you get a stem cell blast on day six when you start to refeed. So I think, yeah, I so, and the, you know, you can look up papers on this. I just wonder if there was a, you know, a collection of things like, because you can be young and the, the healthiest ever, 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 and just have, have, you have a nasty breakup. You're the captain of the football team, right? And then so your girl, but you're a sensitive guy. Your girlfriend breaks up with you. You go out on a you go, you go out on a on a bender. The night before, you're drinking like a maniac. You're still the healthiest looking guy, but you're not sleeping now, right? You're heartbroken, right? And now you get a bad infection. You got this. So the first two, heartbroken and not sleeping, are catastrophically pro-inflammatory. Just your C-reactive protein. Your C-reactive protein can double or triple in 10 days of sleeping four hours a night. Yeah. Wow. Right. Wow. Right. So when we talk about healthy, people don't ever talk about like, like wow. those things. Like, let's just say yeah. death in family, severe breakup with, with, with girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever it might be. All those things are pro inf pro inflammatory drivers. There's, there's actually for all these like non-physical physical factors that how does stress get to us? We have we have reaction chemicals. I mean, what's what's the best word? It's, it's called the system are called alarmins, like alarm. So spell alarm I N alarmin. And alarmin sense biological, physiological stressors that are not physical trauma or food. They're mental. <laughs> They're fit, like not sleeping. Right. Hearing bad news, like horrible news, friends, relatives died and the thing happened. All this stuff happens. All of a sudden now you're like just all of a sudden this vi vibrant brain goes catatonic, not catatonic, but just becomes depressed. Yeah, because the alarms get activated and then the outcome is no different than shoving donuts in your mouth all day. Literally, literally <laughs> those types of stressors, the same, the same inflammatory reactions. Yeah, yeah. It's incredible. So. So I would say for those, the exact same thing, but I think that, I think that doing the prolon thing is probably a good idea just as a general approach, because, because the immune system, you, you can look up and I didn't really think about this, but it made sense and kind of thought about it elsewhere. Uh, but the immune system can be programmed a little bit to be become overreactive. So if you, if you do the water fast and get your, you know, reboot, you know, the, 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 the stem cell blast, you have a chance of, of, of reprogramming the immune system to be less reactive. I think that's probably the best approach to take in general what, what across the board for all of us, but for these people specifically. Dave, what, Prolon? I'm Prolon. not familiar with it. P-R-O-L-O-N. Okay. And Pro what is that? So that it's is called, a so, so, so this scientist out in, in UC or UCAL, you, yeah, UC, University of Southern California, you know, not UCAL, it's this USC. So USC, yes. his, his, name, his name is Walter with a V as opposed to a W, Walter Longo. And he, um, 
studied fasting biology and realized that, wow, there's, you get these blasts of stem cells day six when you refeed and, but doing nothing but water is difficult. You have to have the right cycle. You have to have the, the right psychological mindset to just do no food at all. So he came up with 800 calories a day where it didn't trigger, it didn't trigger nutrient sensing responses. So even though you're doing 800 calories a day, your brain thinks you're still fasting. So day six, you get the stem cells. <laughs> Pretty cool. Interesting. Wow. Yeah. Prolon. That is yeah. outstanding. Yeah, really, cool. really cool. Okay. Yeah. 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 Dave, I forgot how smart you are, man. I, I, <laughs> I got to tell you, I remember having you come out when we got st hospital staff privileges back, what, 25, 30 years ago or something like that in Florida. And I asked you to come out and, and present to the hospital and all the, the chiropractors that were there. And you were brilliant back then on, oh, I think it was the, even the neurology of the subluxation right. back in that time when yeah. we would use that term. Yeah. But Dave, wait, I got asked, this, I got interjected. Oh. Did he use the Bill Burr voice or did he use the Seinfeld voice? We talked. No, about actually, guy? he actually, David was like a nasty lecturer. If you <laughs> like spoke, I'm so you, sorry. You know, he, I'm sorry. Listen, I'm so sorry. <laughs> buddy. Horrible. No, I, I, I loved it. It's when, when people were like talking to each other before, you know, cell phones were around. Dave would like peg them, man. He'd go, "What the hell?" You know, he was an aggressive lecturer, and 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 then and then all of a sudden, Dave became funny, and I would call him like a Seinfeld lecture. And I talked to Stephen Pearl, and I go, "Steve, have you heard David lecture? He's like funny, and he's easy going, and all of a sudden, what happened to that guy?" <laughs> right, right, right. I don't know, but Dave. We're gonna we're gonna now step into a different realm. I'm gonna ask you a rapid fire set of questions right. that would give that would give you an opportunity to answer brief to the point and okay. really satiate the audience sure. with some okay. answers. Are you ready, Dave? No. All right. Now you had mentioned earlier, and I want to just go over that list one more time. What should every regular American take daily? I think that the ones to focus on would be vitamin D, magnesium, omega-3. And then those would be the big three, the big three. And then, and then CoQ10, okay. ginger, turmeric. Uh, calcium to me is, is down on, on the list because these other things, because here's just, just, this is not, people think that you take calcium to stop bone loss. Bone loss is a pro-inflammatory process and calcium doesn't stop it. You want to, yeah, I know it's crazy. Yeah, it's actually a low-grade inflammatory mm. process. So, 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 and then uh, glucosamine, chondroitin. I think, I think uh, collagen. Those are all inexpensive things that are uncomplicated, right? You want to keep it. If I think inexpensive, uncomplicated. So, love it. Question number two: When purchasing any supplements, what should they look? For? Do you have a suggestion of what they could look for on a label? Yeah, to, you know, no. determine if it's some sort of quality. Uh, so I would do this. Uh, I would say you want to go to a website called, uh, national products association, NPA, Ooh. NPA, let's see what it is here. I'm just going to find some crap. Hold on. Let me just get to it real quick. So, yeah. <laughs> so and the, the reason why, uh, hold on here. The reason why is because you want to go by the name you, you want to go by manufacturer. So it's NPA national mm. as in national. Mm. So NPA national is what we're going for. Where are you guys? You there? Where are you guys? And that will tell you Hold on. that will rate the product NPA the national. Quality? So what they do is they have an auditing process. So manufacturer invites them to come in and do an audit on their manufacturing. So, Basically, the, the yeah, so 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 the FDA uh, audits obviously drug companies, and they never audited a supplement company until until recent years, and so it was back in I forget what year it was, it was middle of the two thousands. The FDA came in with with with, uh, with 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 good manufacturing practice issues for supplement manufacturers. So this company called the NPA that I'm sharing with you is Natural Products Association, NPA National.org. 
national. They have a, you, you pay them you know, a few thousand bucks, whatever it is, and, and, and they send in an auditor and you get your facility audited. So if you pass that audit, you would pass the FDA audit. So I buy based upon product name. So I work for Anabolic Labs currently, not because they've got special formulas, because they pass the audit. If I go to the health food store and I don't have, if, if, if I'm like right now, am I out of CoQ10? I might be. I could just run down the health food store and I would buy from Now Foods because Now Foods has passed the GMP certification for the MPA. So I buy products oh, based upon based upon a third party audit, not upon some emotional madness. Some guy with you know biceps saying you know don't eat flaxseed, take Tribulus terrestris, you know an ashwagandha, and you'll get testosterone like me. You know you want to get testosterone high. Well, <laughs> really, all you got to do, fellas, get your testosterone high. Stop eating sugar and flour. Go on a high fat diet. Your testosterone will go up dramatically, dramatically. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. And by the way, and by the way, low low testosterone, right? Who gets low T? Mostly all fat dudes. Pro-inflammatory cytokines from fat mass circulates, goes to the testes, and stops Leydig cells from producing testosterone. That's I know, I know, Spence. I know it's the same Beautiful. over and over again. So wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, I love it. Yeah. All right. I love. God, Dave. All right. We may have to call Dave back for another one of these, but I got question number three yeah. for you. You ready? Yeah. And you probably answered it kind of peppered throughout our, our program, but the biggest misconception in looking at a regular, at looking at a diet, if someone wants to take on a diet. The biggest misconception. What would that be? Are, 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 always, asking, are always asking, what can I eat? Right. It's like, it's, it's like, when they ask that question, it's almost like saying, hey, you know, I'm really going to keep eating my my sacks of gumdrops and donuts that I have stashed in my in my in my closet. I want to know what good stuff I should eat. And I've witnessed this a few times, like at, at an airport, sitting next to business people traveling. It's like, oh, my doctor said I need to eat, you know, eat, 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 eat fish. So the guy gets a piece of grilled fish on a sandwich with a mound of French fries. And it's like you didn't do anything. You didn't do anything. <laughs> All you did, right? I mean, a little piece of fish does not make up for 3,000 calories worth of French fries, right? right? And that is what people, how they screw it up. They, they just, they're dietary crackheads and they need to embrace that they have an eating pathology. And legitimately, I mean, like everybody does, right? I mean, I don't have donuts in my house because if, the donuts were here. Well, they wouldn't be here, and I'd have to go buy more. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but but Dave, they had a diet coat to go with that. So I know. It out. I know. I know. <laughs> but, but right there, though, it's it's what it really is 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 thinking that like my past behavior was okay. No, no, your past behavior was horrible. It's okay. Right. We live in the land of temptation. Temptation is everywhere. Food is everywhere. Yeah. You just got tricked. It's okay. You're not the only one. Basically, almost 80% of Americans are fat or obese, right? So you're not the only one. So you got to embrace the fact that you're always going to have this problem. And I think the biggest problem is people who, who do not embrace that mindset. I do. It's not like negativity. It's like, it's like, it's just a little, oh yeah, yeah. Only one donut. Cause there's a good donut shop in town. My favorite's maple bacon, but I don't do it very often, you know? <laughs> oh, my. Love maple. God. Yeah, love it. And they got this awesome fair trade Guadalupe right. coffee. It's the best. Anyway, sorry. Side note. <laughs> so, Dave. Yeah. I, okay. Now, this, is, this, this question, this, this is just so perfect for you. Now, what can you please tell me the funniest story that you can recall when dealing with people and talking about supplements? <sighs> I think I've kind of not, I, I, it's hard to just do it on the spot. You know, I, 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 yeah. I it's, it's, mm. it's just, mm, I, mm, I think the fun, it, it would be that popcorn brown rice thing is the best I got for, for today, <laughs> but there's something like that though. I mean, it is, it's just, it's just that these right. people, they, they, you know, these, I mean, I mean, imagine being this obese person waddling through a health store with 50 different supplements as if that's her answer. And she has, you know, a loaf of bread because it's organic. Yeah, right. It's like that is sadly exactly. hilarious. 
Yes. Yeah, it's horrible. horrible. Yes, it is. Yeah. And and they and they go to Whole Foods to shop and oh. they end up with a, a basket full of yeah. stuff thinking that that's going to yeah. be good for them. Yeah, it's know. incredible. <laughs> Dave, before we start to wrap up, let me ask you about your what, your favorite book that you would probably urge people to read if there was one to, to start with. You, you got you mean, one? You mean of my books or just? Or, yeah, me, you. Well, for so you, your favorite book, but something that you would suggest people to read as well. Well, I think everyone should read my books, obviously, The Deflame Dive, but but I think. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, there you go. I, and that's true. I would say. I would say that uh, in in terms of 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 nutrition, I would say uh, I think uh, um, Lauren Cordain's Paleo Diet, because because he's the original Paleo Diet guy, and the Paleo Diet has been so has has been so brutally bastardized by morons. It's just horrible. You know, mm. they turned it into like a you know. A, a carbohydrate protein fat ratio diet as opposed to what it actually is get this one because i was on a, I was i did some i wrote a couple articles for their for their website and i said guys you, you got to you got to market the paleo diet for what it actually is it's a latitude diet that's simply that before there were before cultures were trading you could only eat what was local right you only ate your latitude right oh, interesting yeah 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 yeah. So the latitude diet in the Amazon was as robustly healthy as the attitude diet up in Greenland, as long as you were doing paleo, as long as you were doing, right? Makes sense. Yeah. That's a great point. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. Interesting. All right. I like that. So what would be a latitude diet of somebody in the, uh, the city that's surrounded by BK and McDonald's? Yeah, I know. Right. <laughs> yeah. Think about that. That, you know, Terry, when you say that, that really speaks to the dilemma, right? Because no matter what latitude you're on now, Big time. Burger King is there. Yeah. Yeah. Shakes are there, man. Wow. Right? Yeah. yeah. Every latitude is now is now polluted. Yeah. Every latitude is a disease zone now. All right. It's horrible. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I got a question on that. You, you, you hear these people and they're saying, uh, especially the lower income and they live in the city and they're working two jobs, three jobs and, and they're not making a lot of money and they're just going from, and they go, you can't eat healthy for, for, for cheap. And I disagree with that. Um, I just think it just takes a little more work. Uh, so what's your advice to the people that are living trying to just get by, feed their families and, and just get by and they can't afford a lot and, and BK is on the road home or McDonald's is on the way home and, and, and that's just what they do at convenience. You know, what's your advice to them? Well, interestingly, if all the, the all these stores are everywhere, right? Aldi, you, you guys know Aldi, the discount shop? Mm -hmm. Yep. And they have organic yeah. food there. Basically everything is half price. So you go to Aldi and, or you go to Walmart or any of the other Winn-Dixie, any of the, the discount grocery stores, and you can get fish, chicken, chopped meat, still relatively cheap. And you can get potatoes and onions are volume, volume fillers and they're cheap. And when you think about the, the, the healthiest peasant population in Europe during, you know, the, the peasant days as they were. You know, like in the the late the late seventeen eighteen hundreds, right? The, the peasant days, sixteen hundreds. It was the Irish peasants that were the most healthy because they lived on potatoes, not not flour. So they were the most robustly healthy peasants. Yeah. So mm -hmm. potatoes should be a staple. I think sweet potatoes then, because it's lower glycemic index, right? Mm -hmm. So butter still relatively mm -hmm. cheap. So you can live on the cheap and live healthy. If you just, I mean, you gotta listen. If you can only afford that, then that's what you should do, right? I mean, it's not. It's, it's not you can live pretty good over there at, on all these organic. You can, yeah. So I would say that way, and you just have to be more disciplined then. But, but to suggest it otherwise is really like, it's it's ridiculous. You can go into New York City, you know, the bodegas if they're still there. I mean, or the Korean restaurants. 
And I mean, the, the, the Korean markets, as, as we call them when I lived there, and, and the, you can get stuff cheap. You can, s- sweet potatoes rule, man. They rule. Love it. Love it. In fact, I'm going to go cook some up. <laughs> Dave, we really, really love you, man. I appreciate this. Dave, you have an, you, you've become funnier with age. <laughs> and thank you for this ton of information. Of usable information. Hey, so thanks for having me. I appreciate you and uh, oh, fantastic, fantastic. <laughs> All right, thanks I'm never for gonna being look on, at Bill Dave. Burr the same again. <laughs> Thank you for listening to today's episode of the Kraken Backs podcast. We hope you enjoyed and make sure you follow our Instagram at Kraken Backs Podcast. Catch new episodes every Monday. See you next time. Thank you.